Shalom, shalom. This is a new platform. So I am going to make sure everything works properly here. And if it doesn't, I'm sorry. This is the beta test run of this. Um, I want to go over something with you guys that we went over last night on our baptism study on the Facebook Live. And I just recently went over 2 Kings chapter 5 on the God's Little Hummingbird podcast. But I want I want to go over one more thing with you. In 2 Kings chapter 5, I want to talk about the prophetic picture of the baptism in this. What we see, and if you go back, we'll, we'll read it here. But there was Naaman from Syria who was a leper. And, you know, think about ourselves, whether we're Jewish like me, blood, or a Gentile like some of you. We were all lepers before we came to faith in Messiah. We were all wicked people. We were unclean, so to speak. And no matter if we're blood Israelite or not, we're not part of the kingdom of God until we become born again and accept the offering of the Passover lamb of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, right? Okay, so Naaman is like us before we know God. And and then we're, then he was told, well, he was told that there was a God in Israel. Go to this prophet because the God of Israel is the God who will heal. So he has faith. He had faith. He gets there and it seems a little too simple. Because the prophet says, go, go and um, dunk, dip, baptize. It literally is the word there, get baptized in the Jordan River. Dip seven times and you'll be healed. Naming gets angry and he storms off and he says, there are better rivers over here in Syria. Like, why am I coming to the Jordan? Well, it's because it's the promised land river. It's the one, the, the crossing of going into the promised land, right? We're going to the Jordan and, and John the Baptist baptized at the Jordan, right? Okay, so there's all this beautiful picture in it. Naaman's faith pushes him through, and he starts seven times of this baptism process. He dips seven times, and his flesh is restored to that of a child. And we, when we get born again, are to have childlike faith and innocence. And you really do. When you come to the Lord, you feel like a complete child again, spiritually and physically, and completely reborn. So I'm going to read that passage one more time, and I want you to keep those elements in mind as you're thinking about this when we as sinners are then saved by Messiah and then we're baptized or cleansed by him and his word and the Holy Spirit. And then we're made new. Ooh, what a good picture. Now, Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master because by him, Yahweh had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, if only my master were with the prophet who was in Samaria. Didn't say doctor, did they? Say the prophet, because the prophet is the man of God. For he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, thus and thus said the girl who's from the land of Israel. Then the king of Syria said, go now and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold and 10 changes of clothing. Now 10 is usually the number of both judgment and redemption because on the 10th plague, the children of Israel were redeemed and the children of Egypt, the firstborn of Egypt was killed. So the number 10 can have really significant meanings for our deliverance because on the 10th plague is that was our deliverance. We were delivered from the path, the death angel on the 10th plague. So I like, I like the number 10, 10 for deliverance. Okay. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, now be advised when this letter comes to you that I have sent name and my servant to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. <laughs> and this is funny. And it happened when the king of Israel read the letter that he tore his clothes and said, am I a God to kill and make alive that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? He's like, I can't heal him. The king's like, I can't heal him. No, he should have had faith in Yahweh, but he didn't. Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. So it was when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent to the king saying, why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Then Naaman went with his horses and chariot and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go and wash in the Jordan seven times. The number seven's completion the waters in the promised land and your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, indeed, I said to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of Yahweh, his Elohim and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abana and the Farfar, the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, my father, which is just a term of reference. The reverence, I'm sorry. He's not trying to say like priest, 
like right of the wrong way if the prophet had told you to do something great would you not have done it how much more than when he says to you wash and be clean so he went down naaman went down and dipped seven times that's the word baptized right there he baptized seven times in the jordan according to the saying of the man of elohim and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child and he was clean and he returned to the man of elohim he and all his aides and came and stood before him and he said indeed now i know that there is no god in all the earth except in israel so isn't that a beautiful little addition to that story we were reading just the other day? May Yahweh bless you and guide you and protect you in all his truth, in his truth alone. Be blessed.